during the week. It all started with plenty of planning, hours of design, redesign, testing for flow and power gains, plus the making of SLA patterns. So now what? I think I know a pilot that can uh, get us to the foundry. Yeah, I think I do too. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Being a pilot comes in handy for a guy like Vic Edelbrock, who takes his Gulfstream turboprop on frequent trips to his foundry. It's the fun part of going to the foundry. <laughs> it's a high-tech 117,000 square foot complex with 21 core machines. Now for our new LS1 head, the process starts with this, 356 T6 aluminum ingots. Those ingots get melted in a 1300 degree furnace. But before pouring any of that metal, samples have to go to the foundry lab for testing. We take a sample out of our furnace, we put it in a vacuum chamber, we cut it, we polish it, we put it on the microscope, and we're looking for the amount of porosity that may be in the furnace or in the gas that we use before we pour the castings. Back inside the foundry, this cold set machine turns out baked sand shell cores to exact specs of the patterns you saw earlier. This one's for the water jackets. If this isn't made right, the head won't cool right, you'll have hot spots in it, and it won't run right. So this slab core is like a jig, and they all go in, they can't move, they can't shift, it just goes in. When it all gets done, it's ready to pour. The bottom half of the mold is called a graft. It's filled with black sand and packed before the completed slab core goes into place. The top half of the mold is called the coat, and it gets drilled for a filling hole and also a riser. With two halves joined, a ladle full of hot aluminum is robotically poured in. And after the aluminum solidifies, the flask goes to the shakedown station, where the now loosened core sand gets dumped out. The final step is a sawing and deburring station to get the freshly casted LS1 head ready for a trip to Torrance. The foundry can produce over 3,000 castings a day, but to keep up with the growing demands, new facilities are already broken ground next door. Joe, as you can see over here, this is again our total commitment to the made in USA quality, jobs in America, and support of the local community. Back in Torrance, the newly cast heads are treated to the first phase of CNC machining. All right, big difference. You bet, you bet. This is the first off, Joe, and probably one of the most important because we have machined the deck of the cylinder head to the combustion chamber so that we have, number one, the correct CCs. Very important oh, for yeah. your compression ratio. Well, next, the head goes into this five-axis CNC machine with a 12,000 RPM spindle speed. Several times a day during a production run, heads are pulled for a thorough high-tech inspection in the quality control room. This coordinate measuring machine checks not only for deck flatness, but also makes sure each machine hole is the correct width and depth. What did we ever do without it, right? I don't know. What did you do? Micrometers and yardsticks. So. Yeah. After the CNC work, a technician uses a sturdy machine to cut valve seats in the heads before they go on to this assembly room. This is where the better flowing heads, now with 64 cc combustion chambers, get larger valves and bronze bushings. A lot of little things that add up to more power. And this is the end of the road for our new improved LS1 head. That is, until it's installed and appreciated for its proven made in America performance. How would you like to make over 600 horsepower in your 502 big block with parts that are performance matched to work together? Well, this Edelbrock Power Package top end kit comes with the Victor Junior intake manifold, set of Victor Junior cylinder heads, hydraulic cam, timing set, even the bolts and gaskets to put it all together. Of course, they make them for several small block Ford and Chevy applications with prices starting at just over $1,500.